Hey guys, what's up? Only it's me, Feet here, coming at you with a video response to the Happy Console Gamer on why the Genesis rocks. So, the Sega Genesis, man, this was one of my favorite consoles in 2010. What? Let's find out. Alrighty, so, the origins of me and Sega, uh, they're really lame, actually, if you're a Sega fan. So, I was born in 93, right? And I was just born into a Nintendo family. We had the NES, the SNES, we later got the N64, Game Boys were all over the place. Um, we were a Nintendo family. And even better was the fact that I have never seen any Nintendo or any Sega things on, like, TV or in stores or anything like that. And I think there's a couple reasons to this, so I'll name the two biggest ways advertising companies could have hit little AJ. Alright, first of all, um, TV. I think that was because I watched Nickelodeon a lot as a kid, and I believe Nickelodeon and Nintendo were uh, kind of partnered. Is You know, I watched Figure It Out as a kid, great show by the way, and they gave away Nintendo 64s. Later, um, I watched like the old Double Dares and all that, and they used to give away like Nintendos or Super Nintendos, stuff like that. So, I think Nintendo and Nick were kind of partnered, and Nick was all I used to watch as a kid. Uh, Nick Jr. and regular Nick and Nick at Night, so... Yeah, I know, I just watch TV for like 12 hours a day, that's not unhealthy or anything. But, so I don't think I ever saw any Sega on Nick. And then, um, as for, you know, going in stores and stuff, well, when I was little, I never took my wheelchair anywhere because uh, our van wasn't wheelchair accessible yet, so I had to be in a stroller, so I guess, I'm assuming I just used to always ask to go see the Nintendo 64 games or whatever, and I just never bothered with PlayStation or Sega or anything like that. Although I do have some faint memories of looking at PlayStation stuff, so... I don't know, but I've never seen Dreamcast stuff, and it's probably uh, because, you know, I was just always wheeled towards the Nintendo stuff. It wasn't by my choice, I swear I would have been a Sega kid if I could have been. But, uh, so when did I actually see uh, Sonic in the Sega game? Well, honestly, uh, when Sonic hit, whenever Sonic went multi-platform, that was 2001, right? So yeah, I saw uh, Sonic DX, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Sonic Heroes, but anyways, this is the Genesis commentary. So the big game I got uh, for my Xbox in 2004, I got two big games. I got Soul Calibur 2, which I played to death. Like, I'm shocked my disc still works. And I also played a lot of um, Sonic Mega Collection Plus. Uh, for those of you out of the loop, Sonic Mega Collection Plus was a re-release of Sonic Mega Collection released on the GameCube a couple years earlier, and it just added a bunch of Game Gear games and a couple more Genesis titles. And overall, it would really uh, consume my time on my Xbox. Um, you know, it has the whole Sonic um, quadrilogy, you know, so I played a lot of that. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 quickly became one of my favorite games of all time. I love that game. I can't count how many times I beat it, and I can't even begin to imagine how many times I used to go into a that little editing mode, man, I used to play around with that for hours on Sonic 2 and 3, going the, under the levels, dying randomly, editing the levels. It was crazy. I'm, there's probably nobody that messed around with that little feature more than me. Um, also, Rystar was a game I really loved as a kid. And even today, because the difficulty is actually quite challenging. So that game is really, really cool. And I would say it's an underrated Sega game, but thanks to be, uh, thanks to it being included in all of these collections, I think a lot more people have played it nowadays, and that's really cool, because I know it was a really, really late uh, Genesis release. Same thing with Comics, Comics Zone. Uh, that game actually looks really nice. I was just at a buddy's house playing it on a 1080p on the Ultimate Collection. That game just looks great. Love that game uh, on the Mega Collection, except I never could get past the second level without infinite health, but you know what, whatever. And then uh, the Game Gear games I also played a lot of too, like uh, the Mean Bean Machine, I actually preferred uh, the Game Gear version, still do the Game Gear version to the Genesis version, though I love the Genesis version to death. What a great puzzle game, I'm so glad it made it over here by sticking Sonic's fat face on it. And uh, yeah man, I just loved all the Sonic games. I even like 3D Blast, although not nearly as much as like the other ones, but yeah, so that was my first... Uh, feed on experience, see what I did there, with Sonic the Hedgehog, and then uh, a couple years later, I'd say like three years later, I went ahead and I picked up Gems Collection for the GameCube, and that included 
uh, Sonic CD, which was a Sega CD game. I'm going to kind of bundle that in with Genesis. I uh, love that. That was actually my favorite Sonic game up until I downloaded it on um, the Xbox again, and I found out the level design was, well, really cluttered, to put it bluntly, but still a great game. I still love that game. Also had Sonic the Fighters and Sonic R, which are uh, Saturn, around the Saturn, so I won't get into those. Uh, I like both of them, though. And then it just had a, a bunch of Game Gear games. I didn't like the set nearly as much as the old uh, the set presented in the last game, though anything's better than Sonic Labyrinth, of course. And then uh, the big games I liked on uh, that Gems collection, though, my favorite games in that collection were the Vector Man games. One and two, I love those to death. So... Uh, my final, A, I'm not playing in Genesis, but I kind of am playing the game experience was, and I believe 2010, February of 2010, uh, the Sonic Ultimate Genesis collection, which I alluded to a couple minutes ago. Yeah, man, that was, uh, that, that is still the best value you can get out of your Xbox or PS3. If you have not got that game yet, go get it. Go, go. After this commentary, eBay that shit or something, it is... Man, 49 Sega games on one disc, and you can bet how how long I played that disc. You know, I beat, like, all the Streets of Rage games, I re-beat all the Sonic games, I beat, you know, uh, Rise Star, although with Save States, uh, Comic Zone, although with Infinite Health, and, um, man, I'm running such a blink. Oh, Shinobi 3, that one was great. Uh, Golden Axe, those were pretty fun, I like Streets of Rage a lot better, personally. Uh, but they were still fun. Shinobi Arcade, Space Harrier. I think I'm still going on Space Harrier, actually. I got the, like, round 45. I, I don't know. I don't know how long that game lasts, but I, I, I love it. I don't care. Great game. Anyway, so, you know, I was just playing all these games, and, you know, a little later I thought, you know, why don't I get a real Genesis? Is I had a Dreamcast at that time. I got, you know, a couple months before I got that Genesis collection. I'm like, I'm loving this Dreamcast. I should go, you know, go get a Sega Genesis as well. Plus, I was really interested in some of the Genesis games, like uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, also the movie variant of that. Uh, Gunstar Heroes, I know it's on Xbox Live Arcade, but, you know, I wanted the physical copy, Contra Hardcore, uh, like all the Capcom games on Genesis. And, you know, I just wanted a lot of those games that we probably won't see on a compilation disc anytime soon. So I went ahead that July, and I struck up a deal with a dude to trade my Xbox for his modded Sega Genesis region free mod, that's it. Uh, modded Sega Genesis in like 13 games. Went ahead, did that trade. Best trade of my life. Honestly, I loved that trade. Uh, I got, you know, a couple Sonic games. I got Sonic 2. There's probably a graveyard of Sonic 2 somewhere, and probably like 20 swimming pools of Sonic 2. Like, if, they, if a place, a uh, little tip right here, if a place does not throw Sonic 2 in for free when you get your Sega Genesis, slap them. If you see that game for more than $2, slap that clerk. If that game is just so, it's everywhere. I see it everywhere nowadays. I could probably, and I've considered doing this, building just a tower of Sonic 2 is it's such an awesome game, and it's like almost as commonly available as uh, Mario Brothers Duck Hunt, and that is just crazy. Anyway, so I got, you know, like, Sonic 2, and all of that jazz, and I just had a blast with it. First of all, the controller. The controller, I was playing, uh, you know, the other games on uh, the Xbox controller and the GameCube controller, which was painful, to say the least. Uh, but to finally play these games with the proper Genesis controller was just awesome. I really, really dug that. And, you know, I rebought all those games I talked about, Rise Star, Sonic, Vector Man, all of those. I just rebought them, had an absolute blast playing through them. I got Contra Hardcore, that quickly became, uh, that's like everyone's favorite Genesis game, I think. It's just so well made, and I actually like it better than Contra 3, which I know there's a bit of uh, heat around there. I do like the SNES version of Aladdin better, but uh, the Genesis version, I'm really glad that it's different from the SNES version in that, there's still a war going on all these years later about that. But, dude, the Genesis is just really fun. I highly recommend it. But the controller is just what makes the Genesis to me. Uh, my feet, you know, they can't go around every controller that well because for some reason developers decide to make controllers for hands instead of feet. Why, I'll never know. Anyways, so, except the power pad, that's made for feet, dude, and the DDR pad. 
but the controller, I can just, seriously, I can hit every button on that controller without moving my feet, which is something I cannot do with any other controller. Hell, I remember playing uh, Super Smash TV, I bought that game, around this time last year, actually, uh, with both controllers, like, side by side, and that was just glorious. I absolutely, that was just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But, yeah, so I have yet to get the CD or 32X add-ons. They're just super expensive on eBay. Never come across, I never have came across them in a while, unless the price was, like, jacked up to, like, 100 bucks. So I'm just going to wait it out on those two. And I just, you know, the Genesis is really cool. So uh, last example, or last thing I want to cover here, is uh, in 2012, excuse me, in 2012, I got... Revenge of Shinobi for the Sega Genesis, and let me tell you, um, I'd say like April I got this, let me tell you, that game is amazing. That is probably my favorite, I'm looking at my Genesis anytime I do that, by the way, because it's so damn cute. Um, but that game, Revenge of Shinobi, best Genesis game, best Genesis game. I have played that game so much, it's, it just has held up so great, even in 2012, it has a great difficulty. Really fun bosses, really tight gameplay. Uh, the control is just absolutely perfect. I love, uh, I saw a speedrun of it recently, and I was just really cool how you can speedrun it if you want. Um, a really, really well made game. Definitely my favorite out of the launch bunch, and probably my favorite game on the system, although Rise Star, Vector Man, Contra Hardcore, uh, and Sonic 2, I'll give it a run for its money. But, dude, uh, definitely a great game. And I think that's what I'm going to end on, because ending on a great game is always a good thing. So the final little thing I wanted to say here is to stir people up. I actually, uh, people always ask me, Genesis or Super Nintendo? Excuse me. And this is what I reply with. If you like arcade action, go with the Sega Genesis, because it just has so many arcade ports. It's uh, so fast. I don't think it's due to blast processing, but it certainly did something to make the games you know, just feel faster than uh, Super Nintendo games for the most part. You know, it just feels so fast, so fluid, so fun, so many great arcade ports on that. And also it got, you know, a bunch of superior like NES ports like Battletoads, um, RC, Pro-Am, I think the SNES might have gotten that, I'm sure. But yeah, it just got all these enhanced great ports and uh, just really fun arcade games. Oh yeah, I love Strider to death too. I just I've yet to get the actual card because, I don't know, I want to find it in the wild. I'm looking so hard for that game, though. But, you know, it's just great arcade ports like Strider, and dude, it's just great. Then I say on the Super Nintendo side, if you want uh, deeper games, you know, I know the Genesis has Fantasy Star, which is awesome. But other than that and a couple other games, that's about all the Genesis ads. So for people that want, you know, really deep multiple hour experiences, um, you know, like the Zelda games or um, Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, Squaresoft games, I could say. Uh, I'd go with the Sega, uh, Super Nintendo for anything like that. And that's usually how I'm split on that argument. Uh, arcade games get the Genesis, deeper experiences get the Super Nintendo. And I'm personally a Genesis guy. Um, you know, Super, Super Metroid might be my favorite game of all time. I might like some of the Nintendo games, but at the end of the day, I'll take the arcade console every day, and that, my friends, is the Sega Genesis. So uh, check out Happy Console Gamer's review. His budget's a hell of a lot higher than mine, and I thoroughly enjoyed watching his video, and this is only Sweet Pete saying, with my no hands, later.